Hello students, welcome to another lecture on elements of machine design. Today we are going to see the design of C clamp and also of offset links. Okay, till now the machine components that we have designed they were uh, they were being designed at a time for one type of stress only. That means either they were in tension or compression or uh, um, shear or uh, what crushing stress or bearing pressure or something like that. But now, if they are components are subjected to two or three types of stresses, such as combination of stresses, which are known as combined stresses then how to design that we are going to see now when the line of action of an external axis a load parallel but not coaxial with the centroidal axis of the component this type of load which is called as eccentric load you know that is what we are going to consider okay and the distance between the two axes is called the eccentricity you see, see what we are saying is, uh, you see, here is a C clamp. C clamp, how a C clamp is, uh, you know, you just see this uh, video how it looks. Okay, C clamp is used uh, for clamping some of the devices, some of the work pieces. Okay, see, now this is the C clamp. And, uh, you see, now if you say, uh, uh, see, this is the line that is going uh, through the center of this section here. Okay, see, if we are directly having a pull like this on either side, then it will be experiencing tension if it is on the other side opposite direction it will be experiencing compression but now instead of here a distance removed uh, by a distance of e if load is applied in this plane how this section is going to get affected that's what we are going to see see here there is a load p and p means uh, that, that is the, uh, the you know the, the clamping force you can say um, with the help of uh, uh, the, uh, the 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 screw and nut, you know, we we tighten it. Huh? So that is what P comes there. So you see, because of this load, which is acting at some distance away from this neutral axis, so which is called as eccentricity. This E is called eccentricity. This load is then called ex eccentric load. How we are going to design that we are going to see. See, the line of action of external uh, axis, external axis, a load parallel but not coaxial. You see, if it goes here, if load is here, then it is coaxial with that of the, uh, the, the, the section here. Whereas, if it is here, it is parallel you see this axis and this axis is parallel but still they are not in the uh, in the coaxis so this type of load is called eccentric load and the distance between the two axes that is the distance from the centroidal axis of the machine component and the load axis is called as eccentricity okay so eccentricity bole to thoda sa baju mein hatke load aata hai directly usi axis pe nahi aata hai okay the C clamp, abhi isko kuch log C clamp bolte hain, kuch log G clamp bolte hain, doesn't matter. Aapna desh mein toh kam se kam India mein C clamp bolte hain, toh aapna C clamp karke C clamp. C clamp or hacksaw frame. Hacksaw frame means, you know, that hacksaw frame that you used in workshop, that frame. And offset links, crank are subjected to combined stresses due to eccentric loading. So combined stresses means what type of combining stresses are coming? See, the design procedure when we see for the C clamp, the stresses induced in the above machine component are direct stress, bending stress, and uh, because of these two, resultant stress we will see. 
we say come now z let p be the force acting on the machine component at a distance uh, e from the centroidal axis of the machine component then two types of stresses will be induced you see you say this p how it will be affecting this section you see this kind of section that means the thickness of this uh, the, the breadth of it is b and the thickness the thickness that is you know revolved this is a revolved section actually this t is not here t is from where the mouse pointer is from there it will go inside the paper mm, like that t but anyway this is one type of uh, showing the section we turn it rotate it through 90 degrees and show like this okay so this is a rectangular cross section and the rectangular cross section how this section will be affected because of this p see see he, here i have made two small arrows okay this p can be put like this into my arrows okay when, when we are saying p which p this p or this p see just consider one p the upper part of it the lower part can be ignored uh, because whatever is applicable to this that is same thing is applicable to the other also okay so this p this p you consider this p what it uh, it does is you see if you resolve into two small arrows here uh, small uh, arrows that means this also is p this also is p see now consider this lower arrow and this upper arrow these two if you consider you see this turn this turn to pull it like a you uh, know it tries to induce tension so this is called axial uh, stress it will create axial stress which is tensile stress okay you can call it direct stress direct tensile stress or axial tensile stress or simply tensile stress okay the tensile stress is because of this uh, uh, this arrow and you consider this upper arrow and this p now this upper arrow is pointing down this are uh, this p arrow is pointing up and this no what is the effect of this this effect of this will be trying to bend this thing like this in this direction it will try to bend it 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 see if this entire p tries to move uh, no entire uh, this c uh, it is trying to move like this if it is uh, because of the force it is taking a shape like this c okay what will happen see the the inside fibers of this section will be experiencing tension the outside fibers here of this section will be experiencing compression so that means what uh, this p and this uh, will be resulting in bending so there are two types of stresses induced one is called a direct stress sigma d the magnitude of the direct stress induced in the machine component sigma d is load upon area uh, load is p and the area is that is rectangular section so because of the rectangular section the area is the b, b into t okay now bending stress also is induced because of the other uh, that arrow that i have put now there okay because of that the magnitude of bending stress in the machine component is given by so sigma b is equal to m upon z z is nothing but i by y okay from this what is m m is p into e m how to calculate what is the bending moment you see bending moment is because of this p it is acting at a distance of e you see and even in uh, you know hand lever and uh, um, uh, the foot lever See, the, because of the force was at an eccentric uh, city of E or something. So, there also bending moment was induced. Okay. See, uh, like that. So, this bending moment is P into E. The bending stress varies linearly and is maximum and minimum depending upon the loading. Maximum, the minimum means what? You see, if you, uh, you know, if you make a... Uh, 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 how much uh, tensile force is here and how much compressive force is there tensile force you take in the positive uh, this negative so the force the bending stress will be reducing like this and going you see like in this graph will come okay so maximum you know 
say uh, here mag this these fibers will be experiencing tension and these fibers will be experiencing compression because of the bending load but because of actual load no this also will be an um, uh, tensile load no, tensile stress this also will be tensile stress say tensile stress will be acting down upward that means no and these fibers what will happen it will have direct uh, direct uh, this thing also direct uh, um, stress and also bending stress both are tensile here uh, therefore they will add up so this will these fibers will experience more stress whereas here no one is tensile stress direct tensile stress and there is a, um, compressive stress because of the bending so one will minus from the other so here stress will be less so when we are designing or when it fails it fails here when we are designing we have to keep this point in mind okay now let us solve a problem a problem says a load P on C clamp is shown in the figure and it is of 25 kilonewtons. Assuming that clamp is made of cast steel and B to T ratio is 3 and eccentricity is 140 mm. The allowable stress in the material is uh, 100 newton per mm square. This is sigma T. Okay, determine the dimensions B and T. That is the question. So now this is the figure. Okay, you know what is E, what is P, and B and T you have to find out. Okay, come, first let us come to, uh, okay, the first step. Okay, the data given is P is 25 kilonewtons, E is 140, B is width which we have to find out, and sigma T is 100 newton per mm square, and T is the thickness which we have to find out, but B and T there is a relation, that means I'll ultimately, you know, only if you find one, the other will be known. Okay, and uh, due to the load or the force of 25 kilo newtons clamp, clamp is subjected to combined direct st tensile stress as well as bending stress. Now, direct tensile stress is uh, load upon area. Sigma T is mm, load upon area. Load is uh, P and area is B into T. B into T is means B can be replaced by 3T because it is here given here. So, P yeah, this becomes direct tensile load or T uh, sigma T D. Uh, becomes uh, p upon 3t square this is one equation okay now coming coming to the bending stress so bending stress is sigma b m upon z and z is section modulus and is rectangular section z you know this is equal to 1 upon tb square you know this formula but b is uh, 2t uh, 3t so this becomes a 3 uh, okay 3 it will get cut oh 3 square actually because this becomes 9 then okay this becomes 3 by 2 t cube z is 3 by 3 t cube and bending moment is m is equal to p into e this is 25 into this much and then uh, now this term comes now what is the resultant stress maximum where is this maximum at the inner member just now i told you inner member because both are tensile they will be adding you will be adding both of them the outer fiber no one is tensile one is compression so one you know compression you take minus tension tension you take positive so that will be less Whereas at the inner fiber, at a maximum tensile stress will be there. So whenever you know in design you are designing, or where it is maximum stress is coming, that point part only you have to design because if failure occurs, it will initiate in that place. It will start in that place. So you should always design, you know, where maximum for the for that place where maximum stress is coming so now the resultant stress or the total stress total tensile stress because tensile stress, see all are sigma stresses see the uh, direct stress t, uh, tensile direct stress is sigma t and bending stress also is direct stress only so it is sigma b all are sigma so simply you can add them only when no one is sigma one is torque then uh, one is uh, what is that shear stress tau then what you have to do is you have to consider the principal stresses you know and then you solve it okay so now substitute uh, two equations that you have got okay and these two you substitute and uh, you know you will get uh, get sigma t also you know 100 okay that means actually this is the total stress this should not be more than 100 so find for finding the dimensions you equal to 100 you put it and then here you will get 
values like this when you get values like this then you can uh, to bring it into this form you can multiply uh, everything by t cube so it will come like this so finally you will get an equation t cube minus 83.33 t is equal to this much okay so now see how this is the third order equation third order equation this equation you can uh, so for this no this is like uh, ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d is equal to zero like that that form okay this type of form um, problems you know in the olden days we used to try uh, um, solve it by trial and error method put different values and see left hand side right hand side should be equal but nowadays because in the, um, the calculator there is a um, uh, there is a uh, there is a program which will uh, which will accept you know the values of a b c d and will give you what is t directly so you need not be going for trial and error method you you know here now see a will be one because yeah it is one t cube okay see what what am i saying a x cube plus b x square plus c x plus d is zero so a is one b is zero c is minus 83.33 d will be minus 23333.33 uh, in these values you put directly it will give you answer so if this value comes around 29.554 29.54 section you cannot get so you have to round it to the next power uh, now uh, section that uh, the manufacturers produce so 30 is okay uh, so take 30 and b will be three times of it so it will be 90. Hey, from where did this fellow get 31.4? 34.1. I don't know. <laughs> okay, actually, you should put 30. 13 to 3 is 90. Okay. Next. Now let us design another bracket. Solve a problem. See, there is a bracket here. Bracket. Bracket is you know something you know that is fixed to the wall and it will be uh, you know, supporting some something like you know your curtain rods curtains will be hung uh, or some things if it if it is a cantilever sort of thing upon that if you are putting your uh, uh, some um, uh, wooden plank or something you know, like a loft you can use in the houses you know so such things are all called as brackets okay so see so this bracket this bracket can be straight also it is not necessary it should always be curved only okay this bracket shown in the figure is made of plain carbon steel and uh, oh sorry this is not a by this is sigma y sigma y that is yield point stress is 350 mpa newton per mm square h is three times of t see this is made of rectangular cross section this is h by t so h is uh, three times of t design the cross section of the bracket that means you have to find out h and t cross section means h and t that is rectangular section you have to find out anyway among these two if you find one the other you can know when it is subject to load of 60 kilonewtons I think which is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees you see because the 45 degrees angle is there and uh, okay that is not mentioned there but in the figure it is given okay now what this distance is given 100 this given in distance is given 300 now this 60 is given now this 60 is inclined at an angle of 40 45 degrees so if it is inclined at 45 degrees like this we can resolve it to two components one component horizontal component one component vertical component then this uh, ph will be p of uh, cos 45 pv will be um, p of sin 45 okay like that okay now now the data given is p is 60 kilonewtons h is the width depth is uh, width the width or depth of the bracket which is three times of t and t is the thickness of the bracket and sigma yt is 350 newton per mm square as the factor of safety is not given we will we are uh, because here directly no permissible stress is not given yield point stress is given so we cannot completely take it because we, because of that we have to take what is called as factor of safety which we have already seen so 
sigma t will be yield point stress upon factor of safety here you can take either two or three whatever it doesn't matter you see i told you already everybody will not be getting the same values because everybody's assumptions are same we are assuming one body person is assuming it is as two another person is assuming it is three so this value differs if this value differs the answer also will differ so it doesn't matter doesn't matter hmm? Okay, sigma t is equal to sigma yt upon 2. This comes to 275 Newton per mm square. Then cross section area of the bracket is here. The cross section is rectangular cross section h into t. So the cross section is h into t. Say h is 3t. So it becomes 3t square. Okay, then the section modulus z. Section modulus z is equal to uh, what is there normally BT, uh, tb square by 6. You know, that is the value. Okay. But here uh, B is not there, H is there. So it is uh, TH square by 6. So H is nothing but 3T. So it comes to 9 by 6 T cube. Okay. So this is the section modulus. Now that force P we are resolving. Horizontal component and vertical component. Horizontal component is P into um, cos 45. P is 16 to 10 cube. Why 10 cube is coming? Because kilo K, K is there here. You see, you should not forget this K. K means 10th of the power 3. K means kilo. Kilo means 1000. Okay. Kilo means 1000. Kilo doesn't mean only kilogram. <laughs> only when we say kilogram, it is uh, no, kilogram. Otherwise, kilo, K, K means it is kilo. Kilo is 1000. Okay. So, this is 1000. 10 cube. So, this is P and cost 45. So, this value works out to 42 point. Okay. Now, uh now you see what we did is you see th this component this component ph uh, okay this pv you consider pv is you know just like this is a cantilever and this p, p you know pv is uh, coming as a load at the end of the cantilever it is directly induces bending stress and nothing else Okay, this PV is resulting only in bending stress. Whereas PH, you know, this PH can be resolved into two components like this. Two small arrows which I have made. See, if you consider this first arrow that is pointing to the right and this arrow, it is inducing direct, uh, it is pulling it. It is pulling it means what direct tension it is creating. And if you consider this arrow and that arrow, then it is trying to bend it like this. You see, this is trying to bend it. So, bending stress. So, two stresses are induced because of pH. One is direct, uh, direct tensile stress. The other is uh, bending uh, stress. So, this component is inducing only bending stress. This component is inducing two stresses. One is bending stress and one is actual uh, tensile stress. So, first, you know, um, see, pH... Uh, the bending stress which is uh, being uh, done by this pH see pH is acting at a distance of how much 100 so pH into 100 will be the bending moment okay pH into 100 will be the bending moment this is the value so many Newton millimeters and then bending stress is uh, horizontal bending moment upon z horizontal bending moment is this and z we know we have already calculated z is this uh, yeah it is 9 by 6 means 3 by 2 huh? t cube so you will get this in terms of t cube and then direct, okay, during the horizontal component VH, the tensile stress is uh, developed at the upper part of the upper part and compressive at the lower part. You see, this bending, what it creates means if this uh, is pulling it down like this, so here tension will come and here compression will come. So, the upper fiber will be in tension and the lower fiber will be in compression so and then um, and then what you have to do is uh, say pv see ph as we found out pv we are finding out 16 to 10 cubes in 45 this is also works the same because it is 45 degrees both come the same pv also is same and ph also is same okay now 
Now, direct tensile strength be because of the horizontal component. You see, in the pro, in the in the in the uh, textbook, by mistake they have written as vertical component. Horizontal component only will be causing the tensile stress. So, horizontal component is sigma T D is uh, the P H upon A. So, this value you will get and the bending moment. Next, bending moment because of the uh, first we have considered both horizontal components. See, one horizontal component uh, horizontal component causes one bending stress which is this one and it causes one tensile stress which is this one which is given by equation 1 and equation 2. And, uh, and vertical component causes only bending moment. Vertical component is working at a distance of 300 meter, 300 mm. So, bending moment is PV into 300. You will get this value and sigma B is M by Z. And you will get another term. Now, three equations you got. One, two, three. Okay. Tensile stress will be maximum where? At the upper fiber. So, tensile stress maximum will be equal equated to all our sigma stresses. So, simply add them. Okay. This is one is in T cube. Another also is T cube. The third one is T square. So, this T cube, T cube can be added. So, you will get uh, uh, like this one equation. Ultimately, again, uh, you know, an equation of the third order that means to the power of three this can be again treated as ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d is zero so you can directly put the values and you will get the answers and you can solve this like this now next <coughs> hey. this is design of an offset link this is an offset link offset link means uh, see it is uh, not uh, symmetric. See something, see this is called a symmetric link, whereas this is called the offset link. Okay, this is an offset link because you know one side towards one side more section is there, the other side it's not there. So it is, this is uh, experiencing a pull of P. P is 1000 newtons. So, maximum tensile stress in the link is 60 newton per mm square. Maximum tensile stress means tensile strength, sigma t, 60 newton per mm square. And rectangular section, for rectangular section, assume uh, B is equal to 3 times of t. Okay. So, here, see, one direct stress will come. Direct stress is load upon area. And the other is bending stress. This is direct stress. This is load upon area, you calculate like this and bending stress is moment upon Z, uh, a moment upon Z is, you see, this is the force being applied but the centroid is somewhere here, okay, centroid is at a distance of, uh, if total is B, it will be at a B by 2, that is the distance, okay, so this will be, uh, the bending moment will be P into B by 2. And section modulus, you know, this is equal to uh, 3 by 2 T cube. And then sigma B is mom, uh, M upon Z. M you have got from here. Uh, M you have got here, right. M you have got P into B by 2. And Z is you got from here. Substitute those values, you will get P square. Resultant will be, resultant will be, one will be uh, bending stress, one in another will be a tensile stress. You have to simply add them. Okay, this is the resultant stress. Resultant stress you equate to sigma t and then you will get values like this. So, this is uh, an uh, equation you will get um, both are t square. Huh? Yeah, if both are t square directly you can get the value. It is coming to 22.22. Okay. Oh, T square is 22.32. That means T is coming to 4.71. So, you can round it to 5 because 4.71 uh, section cannot be made. So, and B will be um, 3 times of it. 3 times of 5, that is 15. See, you should not, you should take value directly this one. Okay. Then, another question. A symmetric link uh, shown in figure carries a load of 10 kilonewtons. Which is the symmetric link? This is the symmetric link. Okay, it is carrying 10 kilo, uh, 10 kilonewtons. Breadth to thickness ratio is four uh, four is to one. That means uh, 
t is equal to 4 uh, b is equal to 4 times of t and the material used is 30 c8 it doesn't matter which material because they are directly giving the yield yield strength 350 mpa the factor of safety is 4 the breadth is b find the breadth b and thickness t when the shape is modified determine the increase in breadth b and thickness t you see initially it was like this symmetric and then afterwards it is modified into an eccentric link so if it is an eccentric link uh, this uh, t instead of here it is t it is t1 here it is b here and b1 here so what is the uh, what are t1 and b1 this is what you have to find out this load was 10 kilonewtons okay so given data is p is 10 kilonewtons this ratio is 4 and, uh, and uh, uh, yield point stress is given see this is not a tensile stress tensile stress uh, if it is given no need of doing anything but yield point stress is given it should be divided by factor of safety factor of safety you can assume any two three four values this fellow has taken as four here see anything you can value uh, take you know safely you take three that will be better okay 350 upon 3 like that you can take you will get some value okay uh, factor of 54 did he give did he give factor of 4 so, yeah 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 he has given factor of 54 so if he has given you take that value only if he is not given you can assume okay next step now what uh, now uh, for the symmetric link first the symmetric link see for the symmetric one uh, sigma t is load upon area only the sig see when it is symmetric there is no bending involved bending will come only when it is an eccentric one eccentricity is there offset is there offset that means you know the central axis and this line of force both are not coinciding then uh, only eccentricity is there otherwise no if both are coinciding there is only tensile stress and no bending stress bending stress will be involved when there is eccentricity coming into play offset is coming into play okay so for the symmetric link only tensile stress comes load upon area and this value you will get uh, through that you will find out t is 5.345 okay and breadth you see you could have rounded it to six here you could have rounded it six and uh, the six times of four you could have taken it is a 24 you see one thing he is rounding the other thing is not rounding it should not be like that you should round both you first you take it six and six into four is 24 like that you can take it. okay now now he has modified the second one what is he saying uh, when the shape is modified as in the figure that means this figure is fully given uh, and according to this figure this uh, eccentricity is 2.5 times of t1 this also is given this is given because that is the uh, that the figure is part of the problem so the eccentricity is given 2.5 uh, t1 so now b1 upon t1 also is 4 only okay now two stresses are induced one is direct stress direct stress is load upon area that is p uh, upon b into t1 b1 upon t1 b1 into t1 you see you substitute this uh, 100 into 10 uh, 10 into 10 cube upon 4 t1 square because p b1 is 4 t1 and t1 okay you will get this equation then kind of, kind of come to the bending stress on bending stress now in the bending stress uh, bending stress is sigma b is moment upon uh, section modulus moment is p into e uh, e you know it is 2.5 t1 and uh, z is you know 1 upon 6 t1 b1 square and uh, b1 is uh, 4 t1 you substitute all these values and you will get another equation now two equations you have got uh, both are direct stresses both are direct stresses that means what one is tensile stress the other also is tensile or compressive stress okay so because uh, it is bending what will happen in the link i'll show you this link yeah in this link what happens 
if this is pulling it apart see the fibers here will be in tension and here it will be compression so here will be the maximum stress because two types of stresses two types of tensile stresses are here here no one is tensile stress one is compressive stress they, so they will negate each other and it will reduce their stress here more stress will be there so if crack initiates it will initiate here okay that's what we are soon doing so now sigma t is the direct tensile stress for the bending stress you add it and you will from those two upper equations you will get these two this is also t square term this is also t square term so directly you will get uh, the value of uh, t1 uh, t1 will be 11.6 means you can round it to 12 here and uh, here no 12 into 4 will be 48 you can round like that so finally you can say increase in the breadth is 48 minus how much was that that was 24 or something no 48 and 24 it will be 24 increase in the thickness will be uh, this will be this will be 12 12 minus 6 is 6 like that in a round figure you can put so with this uh, we finish the second chapter uh, thank you